Costa Rica? <laughs> yes, in the jungle right now. <laughs> jungle. Do you want to tell us how did you end up in Costa Rica? Mm, how did I end up in Costa Rica? Um, well, it's been on my list for a while to visit here. And after I released my project, I parted from a long time management and I was just like, at this time in my life, I just want to go away from the hustle and bustle and just immerse myself in nature and see what comes up, see what I'm inspired by. And I just, I feel a deep call to listen to the inner voice right now mm. and just see what comes up. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of brief, but. I love that. You did describe it just before we got on the call. It's a bit of a womb mm -hmm. where you are right now. Yeah, it's such a womb. I feel like held like this, mm. um, like I'm in her hands and I've just been reading a lot here, listening to interviews of some of my favorite artists and allowing myself to be more quiet to hear uh, the truth of the messages from within and from my ancestors and from my spirit guides, so direction and choices that I want to make as an artist and yeah. Uh, I want to say a massive congratulations on 12th House. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, you know, I before we jumped on the call, I was just like lying on the beach listening to it from start oh, to Oh, yes. The <laughs> best place to listen. <laughs> uh, I was, you know, I think um, your music has, and particularly this project, really has the feeling and the encouragement of someone who has been in a lot of transient spaces and found an okayness in that. Mm -hmm. Do you, you know, if you could kind of, speak to your younger self about this project and what wow. you've been able to shed in it what would you say mm. if i could say something to my younger self it would be for her to know that what she's going through and the spaces that she's in is not forever and there will be more space for you um and oh that's so deep i'm like getting emotional mm -hmm. like i envision it more than i can say it but if i could tell my younger self something it'd just be to keep dreaming and to keep loving openly as as i know i always did um, because her actions are completely supported and held and guided by a greater force than she even knows. Mm. My younger self needs to hear that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Obviously, we're in a very, you know, I, I dare say post COVID time. Mm -hmm. People have started to be able to move again. And, you know, I think in that movement comes a lot of confusion and like grief for the time that was lost and new hopes and new seeds are being planted. Mm -hmm. Where are you right now in terms of like your relationship with the world and your fears and your hopes and where you see, you know, your external like plane, how it exists with you as a person? Mm. Wow, that's a great question. <laughs> Well, the first thing that came to mind um, when you first asked the question, what, like, about the world and the spaces that we're in, um, my entire time here, I found that every time I entered a new space or a new city here or a new area, I've had to go through an initiation, um, hard ones. And I call them initiations now because they've led me to this place of peace where I can finally feel relaxed and have clarity. But in the moments of the initiations, it's super hard. I feel like I'm dying. I have no phone, don't know where I am, no clue. It's just like surrender after surrender after surrender. Um, so <laughs> that's kind of what my reality feels like. Uh, right now just a consistent willingness to surrender 
to allow myself to actually live. There's a quote in one of my favorite books called Of Water and the Spirit by one of my favorite authors, Mali Doma Patri Somi. Mm-hmm. And he says that you have to be willing to die in order to live. And that's what it feels like in every like initiation. It's like, like I release holding on to anything that I thought this was going to be or I release myself making it through this or trying to find the future end of it and I'm just in it now. Is that something, I, I guess, relinquishing control, has that always kind of come naturally to you? And, you know, if not, or if so, what have been kind of the the growth moments for you where you've been like, oh, I'm actually getting better at this? Mm, yeah. You know, I, I don't think, I think, Okay, I feel that when we're born, we all kind of have that natural way of releasing control. And then as we grow up and we get rules and then our parents are parenting us a certain way and we go through stuff, we build like a a shell. Mm. So I know that I do have a shell and I'm constantly cracking it. Mm. Um, And some things that have helped me to crack, continue cracking, Mm. is music, um, kind of tapping into a space where uh, it's like a space of nothingness. It's like you become a ghost in this space and you have to allow yourself to be like possessed by a, a spirit. And in that like possession, it's like something is working through me and it's like a I envision it as like a gold light or like a white light just going through my body and traveling through and cleansing little little parts that I've never seen light, little uh, pieces of darkness within our body. So music has helped me do that a lot and reading. And I think the best teacher of all is experience because mm-hmm. there's no book that could teach me what I learned through just going, um, and I'm a Sagittarius, so. <laughs> You're like, give me the whole, <laughs> give me the whole. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm always on the go. <laughs> yeah, the road less traveled, uh, I love yeah. <laughs> And it's quite a, you know, juxtaposition really when you think of this philosophy that you are so embodied in and then like the mastery of your creative outlet Mm -hmm. how how do you kind of you know is music something that you always felt at home in or is it something you kind of you know had to really craft like tell me Mm. about your relationship with music and your confidence in it now okay thank you thank you for asking that (laughs) you know no music was not i wasn't like a little girl and i was like i want to be a singer Um, I was always a drama kid. Like I always loved expressing. So Mm -hmm. through whatever form that was, um, whether it was acting or singing or dancing, just anything where I can like be in the moment and move my body and just be like silly or be loud or cry or be angry and just have permission to be in a space. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how it started for me. Um, And music picked up when I was in college. Mm -hmm. Um, I was just, I went to an art school and I was surrounded by so many different kinds of artists. And I had some friends who were in music and they were like, bring me into their studio and like, oh, just sing something. And then I just sang something and I sang some more. It was just feeling good, you know, it was super organic. Um, and I realized that it was something I enjoyed doing a lot and it was something I was good at. So mm-hmm. I was like, let me follow this. And now here we are. I love that so much. I um. I would have to say Roadrunner is my favorite Ooh, yes. um, album. <laughs> Definitely the first time I listened to it, I was on, I was about to get on a plane. Perfect. I was a team. Yes. This is when I put it in. I was like, whoa. <laughs> like, I, like I felt grief, but I felt strong. Mm. I felt all of these things. And selfishly, mm. I was like, Where did that song come from? (laughs) Wow, I love that you said that you felt grief. Sorry, I don't want to change the question, but that 
<laughs> that means so much to me. Um, I was talking with my friend and I was explaining to him how there's a celebration in like pouring light onto your onto your shadows, into darkness. Mm-hmm. And that is the feeling that I want to get through in my music. Um, so the tempo of Roadrunner, Roadrunner is very upbeat and it's like, let's go. I'm on a journey to find myself. Mm-hmm. And there is grief in that because you're grieving a past version of yourself and you're letting go of it and you're letting go of places and familiarity that you knew. So I'm happy that that, that is felt. <laughs> it means a lot to me. Um, Potently. Thank you. <laughs> and um, to answer your other question with how that song came about, I it was just like me and my friend Aaron, who I originally was like jamming with. We were just in my room and we were dreaming up places that we wanted to travel. Um, very free moment of like, oh, like the world is ours and we can do anything we want with it. We can create our reality. We are like in that energy. Mm-hmm. Um, and from there, it was a channeling. I can't even describe where the lyrics came from. It was just like. God, it's I think um, you can really you know, on the the grief thing, I think it comes through in a lot of the album is Mm. like you kind of alluded to is like this okayness with, okay, the human experience, like if you're going to have this beautiful like light, you're also going to have to, you know, make space for your darkness as well. And they interact in, um, you know, very important ways. Mm. How do you feel like your relationship with that kind of paradoxical mm. <laughs> existence? Like, is it, is it always steady? And and if if not, like, how do you kind of bring yourself back? Um, it's never steady. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it feels uh, it feels new every time, but how do I bring myself is back is always the same and that is allowing myself designated time to feel whatever I'm feeling I don't push my emotions to the side ever I allow myself to be angry and sad and happy and like I don't try to make it logical I don't try to think about what it means or why I just allow myself to cry allow myself to feel you know, um, without it being harmful to other people and cultivating a space for myself, like this womb is holding me right now, um, to just kind of rest and melt back into the earth. I'm like such an earth girl. It's another thing I found out about myself. I love being on the earth, Mm. like, uh, rivers and forests is like where I feel the most at home mm-hmm. as opposed to like the ocean or in the air on the plane I feel like super ungrounded <laughs> so the earth um, it's like there's like some magnetic waves in there as soon as I put my feet down you know it's like electricity just goes up into mm-hmm. you and that's always been my grounding my grounding source and when I don't have that which is probably half of the album I wasn't in nature when I wrote it, or I was like in the city or something. Mm-hmm. It was me reimagining being in these places and being held and kind of looking to that as a way of like, it's going to be okay. Did you, with the project, like, was 12th House the initial concept, or did that kind of come later as you'd like? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. These things. It was. Yeah, it came, it came later. Mm. Um, I I never know what I want to call a project, or right? I never even know if it's going to be a project. Mm. But these these ones came together really nice. And as I was going over each song, I was like, what do they all have in common? And what they all have in common is like me and my journey that I'm on. And um, my Pluto is in 12th house in my astrological chart. And it's in Sag. (laughs) So I was doing a lot of research at the time of like what that meant for me. And why do I have these crazy dreams? Like, why does everything feel so intensely for me? And through that, I was just able to connect it to all of my songs and the feelings that I felt during writing them. Mm. 
I, I also really love, um, there's a lyric in one of the tracks where you're kind of like putting forward this intention for relationships in your life of like, mm. I've lived mm. so many wounds, like mm. I don't come towards me if you're not mm. me, you know, there with me and there for me. Exactly. I think that's something that a lot of our audience can really relate to, especially I do think in the post-COVID times as we're learning how to like interact effectively. Mm -hmm. again. Yeah. Do you feel like, you know, how, what would you say are your, your biggest changes in your relationships from, you know, maybe let's say like five years ago to now and how oh. you to that point? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god such a change um and yeah thank you for saying that uh firstly about many months because many months is like an affirmation chat mm -hmm. and i didn't realize it at the time but it was for myself um mm -hmm. and for others who can relate mm -hmm. um, because i think so often we really want something but we're afraid to say it or we think that we're not worthy of it mm -hmm. and at that point um, I think I was like pretty heartbroken when I was reading that track mm. and I was just tired of telling myself the story of this is like what I deserve. Um, so Many Moons was and is an affirmation and a reimagination of what love can feel like and should feel like. Mm. And I don't care if it's realistic to people or not, like you can have whatever you want and you deserve everything that you want. So. Like this is I'm also like very it's my first day of bleeding, so I'm also like <laughs> so deeply that you Happy bleed. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm like mm. it's perfect timing for this call, obviously. Mm. Yeah. Of all the songs on the album of you know, what was your what's your I mean you probably can't have favorite children like creatively. Exactly. <laughs> you, you, is there one that you're like even if it's like this week, like one is really resonating. Do you have yeah. a favorite song this week of the album? Oh my god, yes. Thank you for saying that. Thank you. Oh my god, you understand. Because there's just no way. Like it's just a mood. Like, which mood am I in? <laughs> yeah, which which version of you are you most connected yes. to right now? Oh my god. Whoa, what's your sign? I'm a Libra. I'm a Oh my gosh, you're a Libra? Double what? Libra. <laughs> Whoa, go off. I love Libra so much. You guys just get it. Like, I love Sagis. I feel like <laughs> <laughs> we're just on the same wavelength right now. Yes. Um, okay. When you asked that, the first song that came to mind was Nerves, my song called Nerves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Without thinking, just instinctually. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm really proud of that song because for a very long time I was dependent on bandmates and I was dependent on just sources outside of myself to create music mm -hmm. um, because I didn't believe that I was capable of doing it on my own and creating it the way that I imagined it without outside help. Mm -hmm. And Nerves was one of the first songs that I uh, wrote myself on guitar and I wrote all of the lyrics as I always do, but it was just like, my imagination and then it came to life like exactly how i wanted it um, yeah. and yeah i want to carve out space there to be proud of myself because it's a long time coming of being reliant on other people or just self-worth is a big theme for this album as well and within myself um just realizing that all of the things that i depend on other people for are within me too and all I have to do is believe <laughs> that it's possible and I'm capable. Um, so yes, more affirmations. Nerves is another affirmation track about, it's about a lot. I don't know if I should go into <laughs> I'm like, what can you tell us? <laughs> it's a whole nother tangent, but, but yeah. I think something that's, you know, I feel it's something that's really, um, you know, coming across in your language even in this, chat that we're having is like this idea of carving out space and and, and mm -hmm. making room for things um and it you know I want to ask like what 
what are you making room for in the coming months? Like, mm. what, what's this, you know, time now that you've put this big baby out and it's in the <laughs> world? And like, what, yeah. what is space for now? Presently, um, after my Costa Rica trip, mm -hmm. heading back to New York for a little while. And my intention right now is to, again, it's still in the world of self-worth. Um, it's to say no more to things that are not in alignment with the imagined world that I have for myself. Mm -hmm. So not feeling like I have to say yes to everything in order to survive or in order to be like where I'd like to be um, and stepping more into I'm abundant, stepping more into what I desire is coming to me and I don't have to say yes to this even though it could be good, you know, just really listening to the inner voice um, when it's speaking to me of how I feel instinctually when I first get asked a question or when I first, when something's first brought to me, how do I feel? Paying attention to that um, in my career to guide me further to the path that I want to be on as an artist and around the people that I want to be around as an artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as you said, like you deserve that. Everybody deserves that. You know, that <laughs> yeah, to feel those things. I wonder if there's someone that hasn't heard your music before, mm. if you could, like design their ultimate listening path through your mm. music. Where mm. would you start them? <laughs> Whoa, uh, like in the journey of uh, music that I have out. Yeah, where would you, like, would it be in 12th, 12th house? Would you take them to an earlier, like, project? Mm, well, you know what? Mm, that's really, hmm, I feel different ways about it, but hmm. I guess for someone who's never heard anything at all and for a person who's open to going in a rabbit hole, mm -hmm. I would bring them to SoundCloud. SoundCloud has tracks where I never released, but... I, they're kind of like special little secret seeds of my soul that didn't have to be perfected. Mm -hmm. So for, for those who enjoy that and want to hear even more raw pieces of music, I'd send them to SoundCloud mm -hmm. to do some digging. <laughs> I know where I'm going. <laughs> yes. I trust. I trust that if you go to SoundCloud and do some digging, it will bring you back to the new <laughs> exacto. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and the other thing I'm really curious to ask you before you go is like musically, um, at the time of the project, like were you consuming a lot of music? And if so, or, or even it could be broader than that. It could just be generally what were you consuming um, yeah, at the mm. time of writing. Mm. Mm. What was I consuming? Well, some of these songs on the track and on the album are old, like years old. Mm. Um, so they're actually just a potion of different timelines. But what they do have in common is an air of folk, like folky, like you're on a deck outside and you're looking at the mountains and you're like, gosh, what a life. <laughs> they all have that in common, in that genre. Mm -hmm. um, and I was talking about if I could create an, my own genre name, it would be like mystic, mystic rock, uh, mystic folk rock. I don't know. I'm still calling. Like right. We don't think the like exact name now, but we <laughs> the space is there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Are you a big reader? Big reader. Yeah. Big reader. I love reading. Are you reading anything right now? I am. It's right here. <laughs> I'm reading like three books at the moment. Um, <laughs> You're <afraid. and> <laughs> But I have two on me right now. And this book that I'm reading is called Of Water and the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And it was the book that I had quoted earlier. Mm -hmm. um, one of my favorite authors, he's an African shaman who shares his uh, journey of ritual and shamanism and just culture through a book after being affected by, or just after being westernized and stolen from his family. Wow. Brought, 
yeah, it's such a journey. So I'm reading that book and I'm reading another book that he's written, uh, The Healing Wisdom of Africa, because I've been feeling a call to tap more deeply into my ancestry line. Um, I don't know where my mom is from in terms of where in Africa, because she's from North Carolina, so she's African-American. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm kind of just diving into things and feeling what resonates most. Um, and on my dad's side, he's indigenous Puerto Rican. So I've just been really interested in reading about the indigenous peoples of my ancestry line and connecting more to that. And the writing is incredible. They use crazy words and terms and I'm excited and looking forward to using that in my music in the future. The, the question that I like to finish, you know, little chats with people with is, what are like what hopes for the world live in you um and you know yeah what are you hoping to yeah bring bring into the world i suppose mm. there's so many hopes that i have for the world mm. <laughs> because it's such a chaotic place but there's also peace within chaos um so Personally, me on my journey, I feel the most called to express myself and keep my myself free, keep my heart free, and keep my mind free and curious. Um, and I hope that other people do too. I think it's the best that we can do um, because we all have different stories and traumas. Um, and you really don't ever know what someone's going through or have had gone through. So the best thing to be is curious about others' experiences and about the world around us. Ask questions, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Thank you so much, like so, so much for spending this time with us. Mm. I hope you enjoy, you know, this this time, um, you know, in the in the jungle and just mm. with, with the space that you need. Is there anything else you want to say or like? Uh. Sophie, I could talk to you all day. I don't know. <laughs> There's too much, but I'm I'm just super grateful that you've taken the time out to talk to me and to be curious about my journey and my brain and my music. Mm -hmm. I'm just so thankful. So much gratitude for you. And mm -hmm. I can't wait to tap in more and have more conversations.